Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. This is an enclosure from microvarium.com. I set it up nearly four months ago, and today I'd like to give you my thoughts about it. This video is going to be very raw and unrehearsed, just going to dive in and, and talk to you about this enclosure. So, there's some things I really, really like about this enclosure, and I want to point some of those out. And I'll also point out some ideas I might have for a future model. I like the ventilation on the enclosure. It seems to be adequate for almost any isopod that you would put in here. Might not be adequate for some of those that require a lot of ventilation, but many of those are very, very large isopods that you wouldn't put in a small enclosure like this. Anyway, for most species, this is perfectly adequate. However, I might suggest putting a little bit of ventilation along the sides here, because uh, cross ventilation I find to be very beneficial. Even just a similar number of holes along each of the, the short sides might be great, but like I said, adequate for most species like the Armadillidium gestri and all the other species I have in here it's working great for. Uh, another thing I love about it is that the lid opens so easily. Some similar acrylic enclosures have very tight lids. This one's easy to get off and on, but it is pretty secure when it's, when it's shut. Something else I like about this enclosure is that when it's uh, it comes with very good instructions and a template for setting it up. It tells you where to put everything, and there's a lot of logic behind that. It comes with a compressed piece of sphagnum moss that expands when you hydrate it, and a paper template to show where to put the hydration station, about the proportion size of the hydration station, put it on one side, and so on. And then uh, it has enough substrate here that it's perfectly adequate for this size of enclosure. And I like this substrate. One thing I really love about it is that there was not a mold bloom. Now I can't guarantee that's not going to happen with every enclosure, but many uh, substrates do have kind of a mold bloom when you first put them in the enclosure, and I did not detect one at all with this substrate, which is great. Uh, you don't really want to have isopods in an enclosure during the mold bloom. Ideally, you want just springtails in there. Now, the instructions said to add springtails, which of course I would have done whether or not the instructions said to do that, and I added springtails right away. You can probably see some if I just kind of disturb the moss a little bit here. You'll be able to see some of the springtails moving around. It's a pretty healthy population of springtails in the hydration station. Now in the instructions it also said to put the moss all the way down to the bottom. So there is essentially no base substrate here, it's just moss all the way down. Some of it of course kind of just mixed in with the moss a little bit. Inevitably that, that will happen to some degree with the isopods moving around and whatnot and with the enclosure being moved. But in general, the moss goes all the way down, which I like as well. Now, another thing that I like about the enclosure, it comes with decor. It came with these quirk bark pieces, uh, which are various sizes and shapes. And we'll, we'll take a look at these in just a minute. And it also came with this. There's, in each kit, there's some kind of bot botanically based um, feeding platform surface. That's what this is here. That's where I always put the food. It's really good to keep the food off of the substrate because even if the substrate's not all that wet, it can mold or it can just sort of fall down into the substrate and uh, that can cause issues as well. So in order to provide a, a good feeding surface for the isopods and to prevent the problems like I just mentioned, each kit comes with a surface like this. It might not look exactly like this, but it's some kind of feeding platform that is a plant-based item of some sort. Really like that. The isopods come out here and feed on this. The springtails come out and eat the, the leftovers. You can see a springtail or two running around on there as well. Oh, and there's an Armadillidium gestroy in the, in the background. So those are some things I really love about this kit. Um, the fact that it's also very clear, easy to see, um, fairly portable. I keep this generally in my office, and I brought it home for the holidays, and it was very easy to do because it's so small. Now, it would be lovely to have maybe different sizes, because, like I said, this size wouldn't really work for really, really large isopods. And, uh, but it works great for a, a small number. Now, I did kind of an experiment with my microbarium. And you can look at the original video when I populated this kit, if you would like to. You can see which species I put in it. I'll put a, a link to that video here. But I put a mix of species, but only one individual of each species, because I did not want breeding in here. I endeavored to either put very young individuals or individuals that were clearly male so that we didn't have any breeding at all. And I'm going to set 
these these cork pieces in an enc enclosure over here so that nothing escapes but i wanted to just kind of take a peek at what's going on inside you can see that we've got babies despite my best efforts there are zebra babies in here not what i expected to see because the zebra that i put in here was very very young indeed when i put it in almost the size of one of these babies. well it was bigger than that but it wasn't right. wasn't a big one and uh despite my attempts we've got babies in here so i'm not sure what happened hopefully that was not a hybridization event it was just the fact that this very very tiny zebra had already uh, made it at that time there are various armadillidium in here but i for sure there is not more than one zebra in here you can see whoop, don't want to drop anybody this is a porcelio ornatus nord fairly large one they, they get to be pretty big and uh, that's one that i see fairly often in here and you can see that the springtail population is like i said flourishing in here which is a great sign generally if you see the uh, springtails doing spring that the uh, colony has some some good things going for it. So I'm going to put that back down, and I'm going to have to evaluate what to do because if there are that many zebra babies in here, there are going to be more. I want to make sure I'm not squishing anybody. I want to make sure this uh, porcelli ornatus is able to get down where it wants to be. And even though this is cork bark and fairly light, I just don't want to have that in the way when I set that down. The little zebras are so small, I'm not quite as worried about it. There, there we go. There are some others in here. And I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, the camera, but that is a very large milk back. I'm going to use my, my paintbrush and sort of tease it out. You can also see there's a armadillidium clue guy in there. It was another one of the ones that I put in there when I started out. And there's a rubber ducky. I put one rubber ducky in there, and it is thriving as well. So this enclosure seems to be able to cater to the needs of a wide variety of isopods. The, the rubber ducky is quite a bit bigger than it was when I put it in, as in others. This uh, milk back that's in here, if I'm going to be able to get it to come out, generally don't tease them out like this, but I want you to see it's a fairly large milk back. Not gigantic, but it'll probably grow some more. Let me see if I can just get it to come out. Strangely enough, or perhaps it's not all that strange. I don't see the milk back a lot. It usually hangs out in here. Uh, and the ones that I see the most are the Armadillidium gestroi, the uh, probably the zebra and the um, the Porcelio ornatus. Nord are the ones that I see the most in here, but I see the others occasionally. Probably the milk back's the one that I see uh, the next most often, if that makes sense. There are other isopods in here. I put a, a powder, I put an Oreo crumbles in here, Porcelliana de Spirinosis. I put an Armadillidium nasatum white out and so on. And I have not seen the powder, not seen the uh, powder blue, or not the powder blue, but the uh, Oreo crumbles since I set up this enclosure, which is interesting because they're usually pretty active. So I'm not sure if it didn't make it or what's going on there, but I have not seen it in there but uh, it has been an interesting experience I, I'm sure that I would have very different results if I had set up just one species in here and probably have a lot more uh, reproduction and so on by this point with most species that I would keep but I am enjoying the experience experiment and I'm kind of surprised by the uh, fact that there are baby zebras in here because, like I said, I put that zebra in very small. So if they are hybrids, they don't appear to look much different from normal zebras, as far as I can tell. But it'll be interesting to see what they look like when they grow up and whether or not these are indeed full um, zebras. I don't want to introduce hybrid zebras into the hobby for sure, and that was not my intent. Uh, like I said, I wanted to make sure that uh, there wasn't reproduction. But life will find a way. So thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate Martin sending this uh, microvarium. I'll look forward to seeing how things progress in the microvarium. And if you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description to microvivarium.com. I want to give a shout out to all my patrons. Thank you for all you do for helping make this channel what it is. 
for allowing me to provide lots of information of various types to you, for allowing me to improve my equipment and opportunities for uh, seeking out information and providing it to you. If you want to help out for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link at the end of the video or in the description. And thanks for watching today. I post videos all about aquarium and vivarium pets with lots and lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment if you haven't already. Subscribe. And then tap the bell and click notifications all so you won't miss my next